Gilbert and Dennis Archer Jr. Please welcome to the stage founder and chairman of Quicken Loans and Rock Ventures, Dan Gilbert. And joining him is President Archer Corporate Services, CEO Ignition Media Group, Chair 2016 Mackinac Policy Conference, Dennis Archer Jr. I told, uh, I told Dan when we were backstage that I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming my mother is in here, but that she was probably crying. Because, worry, look at her, she was. <laughs> because, uh, you know, for many of you, I forget the year for the Super Bowl, but when that Eminem commercial came on, Detroiters felt it in their heart. And the same thing happens here. It's incredible. Tell us, what inspired that? You know, we had our guys at Bedrock. Uh, we, we, we recruited a guy from Brooklyn, you know, typical Brooklyn guy with a big, thick, black beard. Right, plaid know, shirt. Plaid, he's got an earring. Right. And kind of, and really a creative guy, a great guy. And he came here, and he, uh, he worked with a director, producer named uh, Steve McGee, mm -hmm. who I believe has Detroit roots and moved his whole family back from L.A. And they, they just produced I just saw it the first time also about a week ago. And I, I'll tell you what, it's makes a big impact. The sights and sounds, there's a lot of sounds in that thing, if you listen uh, closely, but it, um, we're proud to have sponsored it. That's fantastic, that's fantastic. First of all, let me just say this. For those of you who have been coming year after year, and for those who are here for the first time, Dan's never been here, and so I've been thank the, you. I, no, I've been to the island. You've never been to our conference, bro. No, the conference. Right, I, so, it, and, and it's been almost to the point. Yeah. <laughs> it's been to the point Just where sure. it's almost, you know, it's been, you know, in the past couple of years, because yeah. you do so much. Yeah. It's, you know, kind of like the elephant in the room, a glaring omission, if you will. So the fact that you're here means so much to us. Oh, no, no, you know, so thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. It's true. The, the, the truth is, is that I've, I've been wanting to come for the last six, seven years, and I managed my kids' baseball teams. We always had, like, coming into the playoff season. And I that could, the Franklin I could, League? Uh, yeah, well, it's travel, a little bit okay. of travel. But, you right. know, but, so that was the only reason, really, nothing else to it. But I'm glad I'm here. Absolutely. You know, that, that boat ride was unreal today. Yeah, in the rain. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Bouncing around. So to get us started, I'm going to ask you a couple rapid-fire questions. Sure. All right, the first one is, which name does not belong in this category? Mm -hmm. Carnegie, Rockefeller, Gilbert, and Trump. Jeez. <laughs> so you put me, you put me next to Trump, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I'm going to take the fifth on that. Yeah, fair and enough. I, and uh, right. you get one pass. That hair, I just saw him the other day. I was just looking. The hair distracts me, like when he's talking. <laughs> so I, I, I can't even listen because the hair. I'm just looking at it. It's crazy. All right, I got a layup for you. Okay. okay. Layup. Favorite restaurant in downtown Detroit? Oh, come on now. I mean, there's this place that we put in a first national at the grade level there. Uh, Central Bar and Kitchen, or Kitchen and Bar. A plus. You know, it's great <laughs> for now. I, I have to tell you, no, no, no BS, the food there, I'm not a food guy really. I mean, I like food, but not, I, know, I don't know much about it. The food there is unreal, and, and I keep hearing that from everybody around. So I don't know what you're doing there, but it's unreal. Food's unreal. I'm not doing anything as the chef. Oh, I got thank you. Okay. <laughs> she does an outstanding job. Great. So LeBron, Kyrie, and Love are your, are your big three. Going into yeah. the next series, who's the unsung hero we can look to hear from? Oh, I, I, oh, I think it's Matthew Dellavedova, right? Mm -hmm. You guys, I don't know if you would follow the NBA, but this kid, I mean, he's an undrafted kid from Australia who went to St. Mary's in California, and he, he just, I mean, he plays like a Detroiter would play, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he is just all grit. We'll see, we'll see. You gotta Fantastic. shut down those guys, you know? You know, so people have to wonder, you've done a lot over the past 10 years and it's, it's remarkable that it's been that long, but you know, what caused you to just double down and commit to Detroit? Was it, did you lead with the heart? Did you lead with, hey, it's a good investment opportunity? What, what moved you to do all that you've done? Well, we actually moved, it'll be our first, our first people moved six years ago coming up. Where are we now? Is it June, June? So it's June till August. It'll be six years in August that we moved our first people down here. And, you know, frankly, you know, Detroit, I, my dad was a small business person who was in the military, and then he, then he had a, a small bar in Detroit. And so I, I was, you know, I was born in Detroit in the first few years there and came to Detroit all the time. And I, I always hear, you know, how great Detroit was from relatives, just like a lot of people. I think you have to be about, you know, seven years, six or seven years older than me even to, 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 to have these memories of, of what people downtown anyway would say. You know, it was the great downtown and great. I heard from my grandparents, and um, you know, my grandfather was born in Detroit. My father was born in Detroit. I, was, I mean, so this goes back generations, and 
so, so were a lot of my partners from Detroit, their parents from Detroit. And so you know, I didn't like going everywhere around the country when you mentioned Detroit and you see that look on people's face and stuff. And so you know, we, we had the fortunate uh, situation of being able to build a company that had a lot of people in it too. So it was people intensive and, and when it came to the end of the last decade, which I think is still unnamed, Dennis, there's no name for the decade, right? Right. Zero to 10. We're gonna work on that. You gotta fix that already. So, so our leases were coming due in, in various places in the suburbs and, and we had a choice. We had three choices really. We could either extend the leases that, that were there and it was really cumbersome. You know, you try to move east to west mm. in the suburbs and buildings are average of four or five miles apart. Uh, so that wasn't a real good, great option. We could go get a piece of land somewhere and build a campus, but we, we didn't think that was the right way to go. Or, you know, let's come downtown and not only, uh, you know, could we hopefully do well there, but we can maybe impact things and, and make a difference because we had a substantial amount of people. And at the time, we don't have anywhere near the amount of people we have today, but we, we felt we could do more than just maybe driving in and leaving. Because if, if you were gonna just get in an office building in Detroit and drive and leave, you might as well be in the suburbs. That's right. the way I view it. So. Uh, we had no idea that it would, the opportunity that would be right around us, you know, would, would turn out to be what it did. Although we, we did definitely want to make sure that it, it, we led from the heart and the brain, not just the brain. Mm -hmm. And it's a true story. So congratulations on the Nike store. So oh. Saturday evening, a uh, kid that I went to Country Day with, mm -hmm. Jeff Kafton, came into the restaurant for the first time with his wife and two kids. And they got yep. all these Nike bags. Yep. And um, he had never come to the restaurant, but they took actually, you know, from Bloomfield Hills, a field trip down to Detroit so, to go to uh, yeah, to go so to the Nike store. So it took Nike to get him to go to your restaurant. Right, but so you don't know him that well. No, not that well. No, He's an acquaintance, no. not a friend. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So I think that you know, from being you know a tenant and being a small business downtown, you know, I can just I can see firsthand yeah. how the investment that you've made has benefited others um, because were it not for you initially bringing, you know, the initial, what do you have, 14,000 people now downtown? 15. 15,000 folks. I mean, yeah. so those people need to eat, they need to shop, yep. they need to go to the salon, get their nails done, et cetera. So yep. it opens a tremendous amount of opportunity for smaller businesses. Mm -hmm. And I've heard you say that um, you encourage everyone to get in the game and you want it to be very yep. inclusive. Um, and it's not everyone can go and buy you know, one, two, three, four, 95 buildings. Mm -hmm. But for, <laughs> for. Sooner or later the, it adds up, you know. It, it adds yeah, up. So, yeah. but from, from a small business person though, I, yep. can, I see the direct benefit. So I think it's fantastic. Well, well, well thank you. And I, I think that, you know, when we start looking at things in an environment of abundance versus scarcity, and, and, and that's really where it all starts. I mean, wealth is created by human beings. I mean, people sort of forget that sometimes. That, that Well, you know, it's not just, there's like this pie every year that gets, issued and people split it. I mean, wealth is, is literally created by people. And, and as long as we have that mentality, and we, we definitely have it more than we ever have in Detroit and the whole region, um, you know, great things just keep happening. Like you said, one thing's connected to the other, connected to the other, and the more, more connectivity we have and the more collaboration we have and the more sort of positive view uh, of things and, and, and believe that if we have failings, we can learn from them and not be afraid of it, you know, the better off we're gonna be. We just have to keep creating that environment. Uh, that, that, that creates great things. Why do you think that you know, more has happened here uh, in the last several years than probably in the last several decades? Well, I've been thinking about this for a long time and it really comes down to your restaurant. <laughs> you know? So, you know. I love it. Without that restaurant, we don't get that kid who comes from the, your friend, you know? Right, exactly. Right. No, no, it's, in all, in all seriousness, it, it, it's, uh, first of all, if you look at anything about this generation, you know, young people today forget whether they're in Detroit, Detroit, New York, Chicago, and even worldwide, if you look at any surveys, any research that's been done, for whatever reason, I mean, overwhelmingly, they wanna be in urban cores, period. So that's, to me, you know, it starts and ends with that almost, because if you don't have the young people interested in, in becoming part of this and impacting this and, and looking at their future being here, then you, re you really sort of have like one of those old Western towns, remember the facade, and you just push it over. Right push it over, there's nothing behind it. So you, you have to have that, and we, we had that, and we do have that, and that that's what sustains it. I mean, we have, in our, in our businesses, we have 1,300 interns this summer representing 207 colleges and universities, and listen to this, 20-something thousand plus applications, and this isn't, this isn't a commentary on us as a business, they all wanna just come to Detroit. Mm -hmm. And we, we have zero process, basically, in how we pick our people. 
you know. <laughs> so, so I get in a room with these interns and say, congratulations, there were 22,000 applications, 1,300 you make it, made it. Um, don't congratulate yourselves because it was pure luck. <laughs> but um, pretty much. But the point is, the point is, is that they, you know, they get here. There's nobody who gets here and isn't, for lack of better words, sort of seduced by Detroit. I mean, it, and I, I mean that whether they come from Harvard or Yale or UCLA or Iowa or Michigan or Michigan State or Wayne State, it doesn't even matter because they believe. University of Michigan. Oh, left I, that I, well, of course. So I left right. that. <laughs> um, that wasn't funny to a lot of people here. Um, you know, you know. Which isn't that shocking. Right. Anyway, it's, so I don't even know what I was saying. Just forget that. <laughs> I was saying something. The thousands of kids attracted to come here to Detroit. Yeah, they, they just, they believe they can impact things from day one. I mean, they can, you know, you go into some of these other big cities that are advanced and doing well. You know, I actually use now the fact that you, as a, as a young adult coming out of a great university, wherever it may be, you can go to Chicago, you can go to New York, go to these places, you'll do well because you're smart and you're coming from a good university. You now can get a great job in the kind of thing you're interested in or start a business right here in Detroit, but what you can't do over there is impact the community and impact the city like from day one, you know, so. Absolutely. That's it. And um, that, that becomes a sell. It becomes right. a, literally a selling point. And who would ever have dreamed that would be the selling point right. to, to keep them and get them. So. so what I find very interesting, you know, there's a buzzword in the last few years. People talk about placemaking. Yep. Um, I think Maurice Cox is in here somewhere. He knows about that. But the, I have to admit that uh, when the beach first showed up in yep. the middle of downtown. Well, you're not wearing socks, so I figured well, you'd Well, I was ready for it, right. <laughs> okay. Right. When the beach showed up, I was like, really? It's kind of corny, a beach downtown. But I got to tell you, it's incredible. I mean, my staff goes at lunch and yeah. takes their shoes off and puts their sand in the, uh, feet in the sand and get the, they get on their laptop with the free Wi-Fi that you provide. Yeah, yeah. The swings, I don't know how many of you partook in the swings on Cadillac Square. Was that you swinging? That, that was on there. You really you saw the you really video. Went on, you, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. But I thought that that was fantastic. So yeah. who who does that for you, and how do you guys go about figuring out what you're going to place? Well, well, the, one thing that we learned, and, and this was from a gentleman by the name of Fred Kent, who's out of New York City. When we, when we acquired these buildings, uh, some of the buildings anyway, originally back starting in 2011, um, you know, we realized, wait, wait, we have all these buildings. We have real estate people here that have been in real estate, but but we don't have any people who have really get the urban cores. And so we did a lot of research and, we, and him and, and a few other consultants came in who were experts at this worldwide, spent a few months in Detroit, and they taught us a lot. I mean, they, they, they taught us these little things and how they make such a huge difference. And, and said, so look, if you have this, in, this kind of investment in the city, um, and he called it, I think, you know, lighter, cheaper, quicker, lighter, cheaper, faster, I can't remember exactly, but the, the, the concept is, is that people in cities you know, they want to be, they want to be entertained, they want to be amused, they want to, they want to, you know, sort of bathe in that city. And you can't do it just walking in cold concrete and office buildings. You got to have these kinds of things that excite people and keep, keep changing it up. So it's not like the same museum you're going to see every day. And, and, and you can do it relatively cheap and, you know, you get these swings that come in and now, you know, we have a staff of people and we work with uh, the folks that, that run Campus Martius and, and some of the other folks that run all the parks and, you know, we're just brainstorming all day, trying to trying to take all the ideas and and you know put some of the, the basketball courts is the, is one of the bigger big hit. Yeah, you know, it's just you, those those kids are not only just kids. There's even old men who can't you know the jump shots like a credit card. You put the credit card under their under their, you know, you can't get the credit card under their shoes, but they're still playing, and 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 they're it's just it's great to see. I mean, I mean nothing excites me more than looking out the window, you know, one of our buildings and just seeing all the people, uh, you know. And you mentioned Campus Marsh's diversity. If you just take a minute and just sit in the middle of campus marshes and look up and look around, I, there may not be a more diverse place in the world. I mean, I agree. there is everybody from everywhere and all backgrounds, old, young, I mean, and, and just enjoying the city. And that's, that's a great feeling. So, you know, the, the policy conference brings business people, philanthropists, a lot of politicians and policy makers uh, to the island for a few days. If you could wave a magic wand and have these folks go back to their respective duties and do things that would help benefit Detroit, what would you have them go do? Well, so so they had to wave their magic wand and do like one thing or two oh, things? Oh, as many as you want. Many things? The wand, un endless wand. Endless wand. Right. Wow, okay. 
the uh, first thing I would do is that, you know, we're, we're, we're big on culture, I and mean, culture to us is everything. And people, a lot of people say, well, what is culture? And what does that really mean? Well, to me, it really just means who you are, not what you do, but, but who you are. And, and, you know, great cultures produce great things and allow people to flourish. And bad cultures, you know, just the opposite. Mm -hmm. And um, for lack of a better word, I don't know if I'm allowed to use those words. You can go, go with it. So like the default setting is, you know, S-H-I-T, I can't say it up here. The shit. default, shit. There the default go. setting, yeah. the default setting for culture is, in other words, you can't by mistake just coincidentally, oh yeah, we just don't have one, but it's a good one, right? So I, I would say that, you know, if I were to wave the magic wand, getting everybody, you know, you know who may, you know, fancy themselves as a, as a administrator or, or, you know, use the B word, bureaucrat, whatever it might be, you know, you gotta just, we have to change and continue to change. I think it's going in the right direction, by the way, you know, the culture and pay, pay attention to that. You know, the world doesn't live on a spreadsheet, right? And the second thing I would say is, you know, we gotta get people to think big in the city. I was just in Toronto for a little business thing. We had that uh, Cavaliers were playing in, in, um, against the Raptors. <laughs> and, and, Toronto's a cold weather city, right? It's a cold weather city. So, and you look at Toronto and I'm looking up and there's, there's all kinds of cranes everywhere, 20 something cranes. And I've said this publicly before, we need more cranes than just Keith and Casey in this town. I mean, we need some, <laughs> we need some nothing wrong with Kate, you know, Casey and Keith, but we need, we need real you know, live cranes uh, and we need to build stuff and we need to be optimistic. You know, we, I, I did a, we did, had some guys do some numbers. If you took just the companies in the, Central Business District. And let's assume no other businesses, none come to Detroit for the next 10 years. And they just grow, they just grow at the pace of GDP, two to 3% a year for 10 years. Uh, we are 10 million square feet short of office space in 10 years in downtown Detroit. And that doesn't even include new, new businesses coming in or growing faster, which I think a lot of the businesses, including General Motors, can grow faster you know, than, than the, than the GDP, so I mean, we got to start. We got to start thinking big in this city. We got to. We got to get risk taking back in. We got to get capital back in. We've got to. But we can't do it incrementally. We have to start building some big stuff, get some big ideas going, and go to work. And know that it's not going to be perfect. You know, nothing's perfect, but it's going to be a heck of a lot better and exciting by by doing it. Big soccer stadium. One of those too. Warren um, sitting up front right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I looked, by the way. That was, <laughs> you never know. Um, whether it's soccer stadiums, big developments, you know, there, there's people all over the, the city who have big projects in their minds, and but it starts with, always starts with somebody, somebody who has a thought and a dream and a vision, and you know, nobody should ever, ever not bring it forth because you just never know. And, and, and when you're in urban core, the connectivity is so much better and so much more likely to, to happen between all parties and need to get things done than when things are spread out, right? We're saying if you put Kool-Aid in, in the ocean, it's not gonna you know, change it, the color of the ocean, right? right. But you put Kool-Aid in a, in a small glass, you know, it, it changes things. And, and you know, that, that's, that's one of the, the, the uh, probably least sort of talked about thing is that an urban core, the hidden benefit of it all is that people are now together and get things done when you know, we're, we're so, a region that is so spread apart because of geography and other reasons. So two things you said bring me, um, earlier today we had a futurist, Brian David Johnson, uh, formerly with Intel, now at Arizona State. And he talked about looking out 15, 20, 25 years. He also talked about thinking big and he talked about, to your point, the fact that with modern day technology, we're only limited by our minds. Right. Because if you can think of it, there, somebody out there can help you get it done and to do it. Yep. And so I think that's a very valid point. But thinking futuristically, you know, what, is, what does Detroit look like to you uh, in 15 or 20 years from now? Well, man, if, if, and if we get it right and we can, we can, we can just keep the awfulizers to a minimum, you know, um, and, and you know, not give them the sort of uh, undue credit they get because of the internet. You know, when you have a handful of people who, who are you know, creating noise and, and, and 99 or 98% of the people you know, think the other way, they, they get a lot of air time and it sort of skews people's belief of how people think and, and believe. So we, we keep that to a minimum and we continue to create a great culture and you know, the city and the state keep going in the right direction and you know, the overall economy does well. I mean, Detroit in 15, 20 years, even less than that, could be 
And, and it's on its way now to being you know, one of the best cities, not just in downtown, but in the neighborhoods and everywhere else. And it's a story that people are gonna tell because you know, once this thing, and it is catching fire, right? Once it catches the kind of fire that, that is happening right now and people start believing, you know, if you think about what's going on now, there, there's only really, I don't know, maybe you can count 10 or 12 substantial investors in, in, in the private sector in, in the city right now. Now you get to be 100 or 200 of them and believe me, we're, every day we're hearing it from all over the country and even the world, people calling us up, you know, we wanna get involved, we're hearing about Detroit. You know, people are more optimistic about Detroit outside of Detroit almost. Right. <laughs> Which is crazy because I think it always was, the you always were defensive, you know? And now you say something about Detroit, somebody from New York wants to say, what are you talking about, right? So I, I think that, I, I think that it could be, you know, every city's different, so I never like to say it's gonna be the next Chicago or the next this, next that, next Toronto, because every city's different, but it could be a very, very, special place with, with the main thing is that we have optimism and hope, young people, whether they're from the city, raised in the city, or they're the surrounding area, that they're just, you know what, I need to go and get to Detroit because that's where the action is, that's where the excitement is, that's where the opportunities are, and I'm taking my brain, and I'm taking my body, and I'm taking my family, and I'm taking my friends, and we're going, we're going to Detroit. And that, that, that's the environment that we need to, to develop. If we do, I, I think you'd be shocked. I, I was telling you backstage, if somebody were to put, I don't know, for lack of better words, I don't want to say gun to your head, but I'll say it anyway, you know, and say in 2002 or three, and say, um, hey, 10 years from now, that river, you know, that, that mess that we have, that, you know, the, the toxic kind of land all around, there's gonna be this unbelievable river walk, and there's gonna be parks, and it's gonna be safe, and it's gonna be diverse, and there's all these people and all these construction projects that are getting ready to go, and 10, 12, 15 years from now, you look at them like they were insane. So when you look back, you know, you realize what you can get done. And when some, some, for some reason, when you look forward, people get a little bit, you know, really uh, kind of afraid and shaky. But think about what occurred in an environment economically that wasn't great and bankruptcy and all that other stuff. Now, now we, can, now we got open, sort of like got the open road and we just go full steam ahead. And the more people that come in from the more places and the more diverse it is, the better it is. If, Mm -hmm. well, so a lot of people would consider um, what you've done in your approach as uh, fearless uh, to a certain extent, but what, what does, if anything, what does Dan Gilbert fear or what keeps you up at night? Well, I, I don't sleep well, so I don't have to worry about staying up. My issue is getting to bed and getting to sleep. Um, I, I fear uh, that there's, there's not, you know, there's not anything to be excited about, which, you know, it doesn't really happen these days. Uh, but, you know, I fear when people start losing hope and, 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 and people, you know, you can't get more and more people excited about things. And I think that hasn't happened. We're going the right direction. I'm, I, I, want, I want to make sure I say that. But, you know, I, people say, well, you know, that it's, it's fearless or it's bold. I mean, Somebody once told me anybody who dies with money in the bank is a failure. Um, you know, if you think about that, why would you want to die with money in the bank? I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, if you if you were blessed with a fortunate position to have capital and also the ability to get things done, why wouldn't you want to impact the world around you as much as you possibly can, and use it to to create instead of, you know, instead of guys at a poker table who are you know have their chips and they're looking like this. You know, that that's that's not a great way to live, right? I mean, you know. You, you've got to, you got to be smart about it. You can't just be reckless, you know, abandon, you know, abandonment, just, you know, but you, why not impact the world in the most positive way you can for the most amount of people and, and get everybody aboard? Because, you know, if you have that fortunate ability to do it or, or fortunate situation to do it, and it doesn't have to be what we're, and it can be, you know, that's the other thing too. Sometimes people go, wow, we're not doing what, what you're doing. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You, first of all, we'll never do it alone. You need everybody doing it, and, and then let's really see what happens here. Um, so, you know. So. The, the Detroit, the, the, the region, southeastern Michigan, and the state um, has been the beneficiary for a long time of a robust, it's ebbed and flowed, but a robust automotive industry. We have a big defense industry. Mm -hmm. As you look forward, um, is there a particular industry or industries that you think 
could thrive here given the infrastructure and assets that we have? Well, first of all, you mentioned something earlier that I think is really relevant to that question, and that is, you know, if, if we weren't in the technology boom, revolution, or whatever it is that we're in, and nobody knows what chapter we're in, if there, if there is, maybe there's not even a chapter that ends, just keeps going, because that's how technology is, but, I mean, think about this. If we had to just rely on manufacturing to try to come back, I don't know how long, there's probably some car guys here, right? Between the time you think of an idea to build a plant or you decide to go ahead or even investigate it and the time that plant opens, it's years, right, years, it's probably $250, $500 million, maybe even more of investment. So huge amount of capital, huge amount of time to try to bring things back. Now, in the technology world, very little capital, relative little capital. I mean, you're talking about people and human beings and computers and now mobile and you're everywhere. And uh, the time that, that companies can can boom and create, you know, great jobs and, and create wealth and create economics is, is relatively short. If they're, and they don't have to be wildly successful, although we'd like to have a couple of those. So I think whatever it is, and even in the car and the technology front, I mean, we, one of the things is we gotta have a little bit more pride. We, you know, you don't want, and I spent a lot of time in Silicon Valley, you don't want Silicon Valley stealing the car tech capital of the world. I mean, we, we <laughs> so. And there's just, there, you know, there's nothing like in the water there. They're, you know, they pause a lot there too when they're talking, if you know what I'm talking. I mean, it's not the greatest, <laughs> a lot of pauses and a lot of, you know, sentences end like this at the end. And so, you know, it's not, everything's not great. It's not, everything's not great there. So it's not the greatest place. You know, it's one big suburb and they got very smart people there and all that other stuff, right? But man, Detroit has a lot of advantages and, and you know, if I'm running a car company or if I'm running a big technology or a manufacturing company, I, I, I want to build the technology stuff here and, I, and, and there's great technology people. And let me tell you something, they're coming from everywhere right now. I mean, we got, you know, from Philadelphia, from New York, from Chicago, from San Francisco. For, I mean, that was two years ago, even two years ago, unheard of. I mean, would, we, we had to beg, you know, you beg people to come. And now, I mean, they're coming. And, and so whether it's in car technology, or other technology, I just think more, you just can't invest enough in technology. I tell our guys, you know, you just go out and hire every single technology person you can find, period. What will they do? It doesn't matter. Because it doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever you pay them and whatever they do, wherever we put them, they're gonna create more wealth than we're paying them. You need to get them here and you get them in here now. And so, you know, we have open recs for hundreds and hundreds of technology people, but we're filling them because now they're coming from everywhere and then we've gotta train people too which is another way Detroit can come out of, of, of where it's at with some of the youth here. We, you don't need a, I don't know, some of you probably own and run businesses, but you're not gonna look at a guy who you know, understands Ruby Rails, knows how to program and, and whatever it is, and, and understands mobile, mobile programming and app development, and say, well, I'm sorry, you don't have a degree for four years, we're not hiring you. That's just not happening, right? So you know, we, we've gotta, we gotta get, get some of the kids trained on that, and, and they love it, and they can be trained at certain levels, and that's another way out. You know, I, I know I'm, for one, very curious. I think many people here are, too, as it relates to Cleveland. Now, how do you compare Detroit versus Cleveland? You've got, as you said, a small business there. Um, yeah. it's, how, how does the Let's economy put it this there, way. It's, a, it's, a, it's got a loss on the profit and loss side part of it. You know, <laughs> you know. So how do, how do we compare? Okay, so here, this is, we're, we're one of the few people that are in this situation to understand this. If you're from Cleveland, and this is, I swear this is true almost 100% from Cleveland, you haven't been to Detroit in a while and you get to Detroit, man, Detroit is, um, it's unbelievable. Detroit is boom. How, Dan, how can Cleveland become like Detroit? You're from Detroit and you go to Cleveland, man, can we ever become like Cleveland? Like, you know, I'm looking <laughs> both ways on Lake Erie, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of like the grass is always greener on the other side of Lake Erie, but whatever. It's, 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 you know, they're very similar cities. Detroit is bigger, it's more spread out. The suburbs in Cleveland are closer. Um, Detroit, when we got there 10 years or so ago, believe it or not, Detroiters were more optimistic, I thought, than Cleveland's. And, I, and I, as crazy as this sounds, there's something about a championship in sports teams that's like affects the psyche and, and self-esteem of a city. I mean, probably shouldn't, but it does. We're hoping to end that in a, within a couple of weeks here. But, but <laughs> you know, it, 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 but now Cleveland also, we, we got the Republican National Convention where we can talk about hair for the whole time. And, right. Um, we can just ignore that part. You know, of it. And, and that's actually in our arena. I don't. That's another. You know, that we're not. You know, the security thing is just. It's it's all in good shape. But 
you know, they're both doing well. These industrial downtown urban cores, I mean, I, I just think that's where the action is. I mean, I think, and I think this generation, again, this millennial generation, they want to impact things. I mean, they want to, that's, yeah, they want to get paid well like anybody would, but they do have this, this need, want, which I think is great, you know, to, to make things better. And, and that does not conflict with capitalism, unlike certain Hollywood movies like you to believe. I mean, it just doesn't. And in fact, I will tell you that, you know, we, we consider our mission Detroit, you know, we consider our mission Cleveland, um, and, and we do a, do a lot for it, and, and, and we're proud to do it, but our people do more, you know, and they're, they're involved in every way, and I think they're better at their day jobs because of it. Like, when a company has this, this thing, this mission, they're, they're better at their day jobs, and that's a win-win for everybody. Well, I, I talked about, um, in my earlier comments today, about I go on bike rides, mm -hmm. and I see monuments, uh, and I know this is not your thing, but I- You go with socks, or do you- I do wear socks when I ride on a bike. That's so I make sure. But, um, okay. you know, and I notice these monuments to people, mm -hmm. you know, very impactful, um, Dodge, Wilson, Ford, mm -hmm. um, and I will say that, you know, not wishing you any ill will, obviously, but <laughs> in 100 years from now, you will definitely have a monument because you've kicked oh. ass oh, for the city no. of Detroit. Okay. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Appreciate that. Um, I, I, any I, parting words? Yeah, I, I would just say that, that, you know, the feeling, is, you know, we call it IFR and VFR. Those of you who are flying airplanes or have ever taken, you know, ever taken like flying lessons. So, you know, when, you're, when you take flying lessons, first you, you learn visual flight rules, which is your gut and your eyes and your ears, and then you graduate to instrument, IFR, which is metrics and numbers and all that stuff, right? You, you, if you're just a pilot that flies instrument only, eventually you're gonna crash the airplane. If you're just a pilot that only goes by your gut, you're gonna also crash the airplane. So you, 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 need, to, you need to have both, and I think if we can get, most people are, are tied into the numbers pretty well and the metrics and all that, but but vision and, and creation of wealth and ideas, there's nowhere to measure that on, on spreadsheets. And if there's anything I could say is that, you know, the, Detroit needs to get on the offense and, and, and continue with big ideas and think big. I mean, we're here anyway, you might as well think big. You gotta think anyway, right? So, you know, let's just give, you know, let's give, especially for the kids. You know, I saw this group of kids on the boat. Uh, they're Detroit public schools. I guess they're in a band here. They're all from different schools. And you could just see they're in high school, right? And they're, you know, they're talking about, you know, Big Sean and J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, and and they're just pumped up about things. And they're those excited. are rap artists. Yep. And, you know, the same guy who the same guy who just read from Detroit, Big Sean, who just read the, you know, the the the, the words in, in that video you saw. But, you know, there's excitement in their eyes, though. I'm turning around talking to them. There's excitement in their eyes, and and we 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 have a responsibility and obligation to to light that fire and, 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 and give them that hope and not, you know, not have them, you know, fall into to some place where, where they lose hope. And, you know, it's better than it's been in a long time. We just gotta keep building on it and get more and more people doing it. The, city, the city's gonna be something special. It's, it is already, but it's gonna continue to Thank do you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.